Hello and welcome to the Red Feather Genealogy channel and the accompanying book. This is where I share various examples and strategies for family ancestry, often from my own experiences and those of others I've worked with. So, first of all, what is a haplogroup? Well, shown on my tree as the usual example, a haplogroup is shared genetic information that goes up the paternal line and up the maternal line. Uh, this is one of those subjects that's going to sound complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. So here you've got the red arrows uh, going through my dad, his dad, and so on, and the blue arrows, my mom and her mom, and so on. Uh, this is information shared generally for centuries, going far back into the past, and the information mutates once in a while over the course of thousands of years, but is generally identical and uh, it can go a pretty long way toward pinpointing where uh, you might have originated in the old world or in the new world if you're one of those haplogroups too. Uh, there are a few that do uh, coincide with Native American populations and as such here's the map this is the uh, paternal map otherwise known as the uh, Y chromosome tree this is just uh, how the different groups have mutated and spread all over the world where you can expect to find them uh, one note on the paternal DNA test is that if you're female, you will not be able to get the paternal side of it because there's no Y chromosome involved. You would need to get a brother or your dad or another relevant uh, male cousin who has the same male lineage as yours, and, uh, and you'll be able to get it that way. So, this is the Y tree, and this is the X tree. Uh, the female lineage tree. Uh, similarly, it's spread out all over the world. And how do you go about finding this out? Well, there are several companies that uh, report this information along with all the other uh, genetic goodies. The one that I went through, the only one that I can speak for myself, is 23andMe. There are plenty of companies that do it. Uh, Ancestry DNA does not currently do it. But these guys do, and I'll show you exactly what you get back from them when you do. So, here we've got my paternal results. Uh, as you can see, it looks a little bit complicated, maybe with the, uh, <laughs> the lengthy result there, the R1B, 1B, so on. Um, essentially what this means, as you can tell from the map, is Western Europe. Uh, why this is relevant, in my case, uh, like a lot of people, a lot of people have the uh, the Indian legend, the little Cherokee myth or something like that. In my case, for the first 30 years of my life, I thought that my dad's dad was a Mohawk Indian. Well, I took this test and uh, nope, the line is actually white, or at least it started out white. Sometimes you can have a uh, white lineage that turns black, then white again as it travels around the world and through time and whatnot, but the point being, this is where it originated, uh, Western Europe, very specifically. Uh, similarly, we've got the uh, maternal haplogroup, in this case, H. Just plain H. Uh, <laughs> if it looks very European, it's because literally half the women in Europe have it or a subgroup of it. I honestly think of it as kind of the white bread of Europe. Uh, this was not a tremendous surprise. In my case, it goes back to Scotland. But as you can see, it could go back to pretty much anywhere. It's just a, uh, a massive, massive group. Uh, the reasons for the movements of these groups, the mutations of them, this is all stuff that, by the way, I, I strongly encourage further study, especially since you'll probably end up with subclades of these, subgroups. Uh, this is a science that's evolving all the time, and uh, by all means make use of the internet digging that stuff up. So, since my maternal age group is a little bit dull, uh, I'll focus just a little bit here on my paternal group, and what we've got here is a really nice map of R1B and its migration. You can see here in the east, over there in modern-day Iran, that area, uh, it was R1B. As it spread and it moved around, you can see where it becomes subgroups and it starts to look more complicated. 
as it moves westward. Uh, sort of in the middle of the map, if you look in the uh, kind of red area and Italy in the Alps where it says U152, that is another name for the lengthy R1B result that I got. Again, this is where you should just punch in your result on Google and just see what other, uh, what other designations your subclade might have. I know this can sound kind of complicated to people just starting out, but it's what I did. Uh, so there's me up in the Alps. Um, this was also important to me because um, there is a question on my paternal line. It, it kind of ends abruptly 200 years ago in the middle of nowhere in Canada. And there was essentially a point where my line could have been Scottish or French. But thanks to uh, the specificity of this test, uh, you can see that it was much more likely to be French than Scottish because it becomes a different group altogether as it goes up into the Isles, which I am apparently not a part of. So what does this mean in practical terms? In practical terms, this means cool stuff like, as I say, when you Google it and you get more information, uh, R1B apparently was associated with a lot of uh, early mammoth hunters. Uh, just little things like that I think are pretty cool. Of course, this was a very, very long time ago in a very different part of the world than France, but nonetheless, they seem to be associated with it, and uh, I think it's great. So here we've got a, uh, a better map of where my group ended up. Again, my group ended up being U152, otherwise known as, as you see here, RS28. Once again, I know it seems complicated, but really, it, you get used to it very quickly. And even if you don't look into it, that initial map that it gives you will just tell you everything you need to know. It's just nice to find bigger, more specific maps, and this is as specific as it gets. Uh, you can see where they were starting out in the region of the Alps, and they were coming down toward Rome and headed toward the Atlantic. Um, one website gives a really great argument that a lot of the original population of the Roman Republic and then the Empire was actually rooted in the specific group of people, which I find absolutely fascinating. Uh, in my case, in the more recent history, what it amounted to was French-Canadian voyageurs. These were the canoemen who were paddling around in the middle of the freezing cold nowhere up north looking for animal pelts with Indian guides and and that's another whole long story. So, uh, to get back to my tree and what that means for my tree, this is what the tree looks like with all the pertinent information on it. Essentially, it's just that simple. It means someone from France came over here a few hundred years ago, went down the St. Lawrence River, and uh, pretty much the rest is history over here, uh, chasing animals on up through the Civil War or on up through me. That's my paternal lineage. Uh, the maternal line is uh, much better documented. I've got photos and details, incredible details. Uh, it's women that go back to a very specific village in Scotland, so yes, I'm going to use the picture because yes, I do like the movie and I was pretty thrilled to find out that I do go back to Scotland in a significant manner such as that. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty much what you get with a haplogroup test. Don't be intimidated by the process. It's actually pretty simple. You just test with uh, 23andMe, or feel free to scout around at the other companies first, and uh, it'll let you know where you go back to thousands of years in the past.